Hi children, I am going to start new lesson in geography that is industries in India. The title of the lesson is industries in India. This is part one. Industries play a key role in the development of the country. As we have already learned earlier, there are three sectors in any country's economy. There are three sectors. The first one is primary or agricultural sector. Development of primary sector provides food security to all the people. If we increase food production, that means the government is providing food security to all the people. And uh, industrial sector, second one is industrial sector. If this sector is well developed, industrial sector is well developed, it leads to the development of the nation. It indicates the nation's development. More the industrial development, more will be the nation's development. And the third sector is tertiary or service sector. If this sector is well developed, it shows modernization of the economy. Now remember these things. Primary sector provides food security to the people and uh, industrial sector, if it is well developed, it shows the, it indicates the nation's development and if service sector is well developed, it shows the modernization of the economy. And in this lesson, we are going to learn how different industries are developed in India step by step. And what is the role of the government in the development of industries? For a long time in India, handicrafts, especially textile goods, were the main industries. In the beginning, from the beginning, textiles was the only industry which was carried out by the people in India. Because under the British rule, industries were not developed by the British. Because they exploited all the resources from India and they manufactured goods in factories in their country and again these manufactured goods were sold in Indian markets at cheaper rates without imposing any tax on imports. So they were cheaper in Indian markets. So the domestic producers could not compete with the machine made goods which were cheaper and better in quality also because they were made by machines. So many of the industries were closed down during the British rule and it was only during the second world war that some industries were developed in India to meet the needs of the people. When these uh, England and other countries, they were busy supplying food and other things to the soldiers in the war, they could not produce what we needed. So it was at that time that some of the industries were developed in India to meet the needs of the people. And after independence, the main aim, of, aim was to increase agricultural production. As many of the food grain producing countries, they went into Pakistan at the time of partition. Lahore, Peshawar, all these were food grain producing cities. So they went into Pakistan at the time of partition. So there was a need to increase the agricultural production. So when five-year plans were introduced in 1950 by the first independent government, that is Nehru's government, and implemented in 1951, in the first five-year plan, Though agriculture was given priority in the first five-year plan because there was a need to increase the agricultural productivity. And many multi-purpose projects were also constructed to provide irrigation and to the fields. To increase the production, we need to provide irrigation facilities. And electricity was also generated by these multi-purpose projects. And this electricity was used by the industries. And thus, simultaneously, industries were also developed in India from the time of starting of the five-year plans. And the main idea behind all this was to become self-sufficient without depending on other countries for our needs so that we need not import anything from other countries. If we are self-sufficient, we can produce our own goods. We need not import anything from other countries. And for running the factories, we need machines. And for the machines to work, we need electricity. Now, the basic requirement for producing any type of goods is raw materials. For example, steel is produced from iron and coal. By using iron ore and coal, we produce steel. And this steel is used to produce cycles or almeras. Some factories produce steel sheets by using raw materials like iron and coal. And these steel sheets are used for producing cycles, almeras, etc. And some factories produce goods which are used in the production process of other goods by other factories and these goods are called intermediate goods 
and the factories that produce these goods are called intermediate goods industries and some factories produce consumer goods that are used in our daily life like soaps pens utensils etc now for more clarity let us first have look at the different type of industries based on different factors first of all based on ownership industries are of three types based on ownership industries are of three types public sector industries these are owned by the government and private sector industries these are owned by the private people and joint sector industries these are owned by both the government and the private people and the best example for this joint sector industries oil oil india limited it is the name of a company oil oil india limited this is the best example for joint sector industries joint sector means owned by both the government and the private people and now based on goods produced what type of goods are produced in in the industries based on that industries are of four types first one is basic goods industries example transport electricity etc which form the base to support all the industries base these are the basic needs for in any industry to start production transport electricity so these are called basic goods industries consumer goods industries which produce consumer goods consumer goods means goods of daily use for our daily consumption capital goods industries which produce capital goods like machinery heavy machinery all the all type of machinery comes under capital goods and these machinery are needed by the factories to produce other goods so intermediate goods industries intermediate goods industry means which produce goods industries which produce goods that are used in the production process of other goods they are not final goods they are not used or consumed by the people they are used in the production process of other goods and such goods are called such industries are called intermediate goods industries industries which produce goods that are used in the production process of other goods like tires they are called as intermediate goods industries and based on investment there are three types of industries first one is large scale in industries medium scale industries small scale industries actually the amount of investment is fixed by the government and within that limit if the industries invest those are called small scale industries or medium scale industries if investment goes beyond that limit fixed by the government those are large scale industries and this amount of investment fixed by the government keeps on changing from time to time this varies from time to time so large scale industries which need more investment medium scale medium investment and small scale less investment they need now based on raw materials which are used in the production process the industries are divided classified into three types and those are agro based industries mineral based industries and forest based industries now let us see what are agro based industries industries which use raw materials provided by the agricultural sector for example cotton textiles industry is there for that what we use we use cotton cotton is produced in agricultural fields so the agricultural sector is providing the raw materials so all the industries which use raw materials provided by the agricultural sector jute industry sugar cane and sugar industry all these are agro based industries and second one is mineral based industries if minerals or ores are used as raw materials those are called mineral based industries industries which use minerals as raw materials for producing goods are called mineral based industries example iron and steel aluminum smelting and there are many more examples forest based industries the third type is forest based industries industries which use forest products as raw materials for the production of goods forest products are used as raw materials for the production of other goods these industries are called forest based industries for example best example is paper industry we get pulp from the forest is only for softwood trees and then paper industries done and in the same way now let us see what are basic goods industries in this lesson we are going to learn about basic goods industries and also some of the 
agro waste and mineral waste industries. Now let us see what are basic goods industries first. As we know, raw materials are the first requirement to produce any goods. And these raw materials are to be transported to factories from agricultural fields or mines and also to transfer manufactured goods from factories. Once the manufacturing is production is over, these manufactured goods are to be transported from factories to the markets for sale. Trans for this, transportation is needed. For transporting raw materials to the factories and also for transporting the, for transferring the manufactured goods to the market for sale, we need transportation. And trucks, railways, ships, these are different such means of transport. What do we need for transportation? A good system of roads is needed for providing means of transport. What do we need? We need for transportation a good system of roads which connect a large number of towns and cities and also villages. And ships are also the best and the cheapest means of transport. Now, with all this, now it is clear that to develop industries, to run large number of factories, there are some basic requirements like machines, electricity to run the machines, minerals and ores which are used as raw materials and overall transport facilities. To transport the raw materials and to transport the manufactured goods to the market, we need transport facilities. So all these are the basic requirements to start any industry. And factories which produce all these essential goods like machines, electricity, minerals, transport facilities, etc. are called basic industries or basic goods industries. And we can define basic industries as industries that produce all the essential goods that form a base to support a large number of factories. These basic goods, once they are produced, they support a large number of factories because for all the industries they are needed. They are the basic requirements for all the industries. So they support a large number of factories that produce variety of goods. Now, industrial location. Where these industries are to be located? Now let us see. Generally, industries are located in a place where all the required factors of production are available. What are these requirements? Raw materials, labor, capital, electricity, markets, etc. All these are the basic requirements. And these factors of production is labor, land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. These are the factors of production. Where raw materials are available, labor, capital and other factors of production are available, electricity is available, markets for sale of goods are available. In such places only the industries are set up. So, industrialists choose a place where all these are available to start an industry. Before selecting a place, they keep in mind all these factors. Wherever these factors are available, easily accessible, raw materials, labor, or capital for providing capital, bank service, banking services, electricity, and markets for sale. There, the industrialists choose that place for starting their industries. And it is very difficult to get such a place where all these facilities are available at one place. So, what the industrialists do? They choose a place for location of the industry where all these facilities are either available or can be arranged at a lower cost. If they are not available in that place, at least they can be arranged at a lower cost without spending much money. Such a place is chosen by the industrialists for setting up their industries. And once the factory starts functioning, urbanization starts. Urbanization means migration of people from rural areas to urban areas and settling there. That means when factories start functioning, People from rural areas, they migrate to towns and cities to find job opportunities. And thus, industrialization and urbanization go hand in hand. As soon as the factories are set up, people from rural, rural areas, they migrate to towns and cities to find job opportunities in the factories for better wages. Thus, we can say that industrialization and urbanization go hand in hand. And all the required facilities for industries are provided by the cities like banks, means of transport, markets, labor, all these are available in the urban areas 
and if many industries come together to make use of these facilities which are provided in urban areas it is known as agglomeration economies it is very important point i am repeating once again generally the urban areas that is cities they provide all the requirements all the basic requirements to start industries like banking services means of transport markets labor electricity all these are provided by the urban areas urban centers provide all these facilities and if many industries come together to make use of these facilities which are provided by the urban centers it is known as agglomeration economies and before independence manufacturing units were set up near to the ports only to facilitate easy and cheap transport because in those days the water transport was the cheapest transport so most of the manufacturing units were set up near to the ports so that it was very easy for them to transport the goods now see this chart inputs raw materials and or component parts raw materials which are required in the production process or any other component parts which are also used in the production process they are called as basic inputs for any industry these are the basic inputs raw materials and component parts and factors of production are land labor capital entrepreneur these four are factors of production now these are raw materials are to be transported to the factories for starting production you can see in the chart they are being transported to the factory and in the factory manufacturing activity takes place and after the manufacturing production is ready to be sold in the market that is called output output means production after manufacturing activity starts production is ready for sale in the market that is called output and this output is again to reach the market we need transportation again this production of good these goods which are produced in the factory they have to reach the market for sale and this is what shown in the chart first raw materials and component parts have to reach the factory for starting manufacturing or production and in the factory manufacturing activity takes place and production starts and production is ready now production is called output input means raw materials which are used in the production process output means production and these produced goods are also to reach the market they need transportation and again from market only some raw materials or component parts they are purchased now we are going to learn about some of the agro based industries what are these agro based industries already we learnt about it what are these agro based industries the industries which are based on agricultural products are called agro based industries that means industries for which the raw materials are pro provided by the agricultural sector like textile industry sugar industry jute industry all these are agro based industries the industries which are based on agricultural products for their raw materials they are called agro based industries now the first one is textile industry textile industry it occupies a unique position in the indian economy because it is the largest employer after agriculture in india as you know the largest employer is agricultural sector that means it provides employment opportunities to large number of people many people they depend on agricultural sector and after agriculture textiles industry is the second largest employer textile industry occupies unique position in the indian economy it contributes to industrial production 14% it contributes to the industrial production out of the total industrial production 14% is contributed by the textile industry and in employment generation 35 million people they are directly getting employment in textile industry and it is the second largest after agriculture as i told you agriculture is the largest employer providing largest employment opportunities to the people and after agriculture textiles industry is the second largest and it also earns foreign exchange foreign exchange earnings are about 24.6% and it contributes 4% towards gdp as i told you already all the three sectors of the economy they contribute to the gdp of the country gdp means gross domestic produce 
and all these three sectors they contribute to the gdp of the country and the country's development depends on this gdp growth rate i told you many a times so this textiles industry contributes 4% to country's gdp and it is the only industry in the country textiles industry is the only industry in the country which is self reliant it it depends on itself and complete in the value chain that means from you can see in the down chart fiber production spinning weaving knitting dyeing garment manufacturing for everything we need not depend on other countries this in this textile industry itself all these things are produced so it is self reliant and complete in the value chain from raw material to the highest value added products everything is available within the industry itself so it is the only industry which is self reliant and complete in the value chain from raw material to the highest value added products everything is arranged within the textile industry only now cotton textiles in ancient india as you know cotton textiles were produced only by hand spinning by spinning yarn by hand and also handloom weaving techniques handloom weaving techniques were there were no machines in those days so handloom weaving techniques were used by them and uh, yarn was also spun by hand and after the 18th century power looms were invented and these power looms came to be used in the industries and uh, during the colonial rule when britishers were ruling india our traditional industries like textiles handloom industry and all they suffered a setback because during the colonial period these britishers as i told you they used to exploit all the resources from our india to their country they transported the raw materials then like cotton was exported to their country and cloth was made in their factories by using the newly invented machines and this cloth was again exported to indian markets and it was sold in indian markets at a cheaper rate it was at a cheaper rate because they were ruling the country and they did not impose any tax on imports so it was cheaper and it was a better quality also because it was machine made so at that time during the british rule the mill made cloth from england came to the indian markets and our local producers it was handmade cloth they were producing handmade cloth this handmade cloth which was produced by the local producers they could not compete with the mill made cloth from england so many of the industries were closed down during the british rule and today there are nearly 1600 cotton and human made fiber textile mills in the country and about 80% of these are in the private sector i told you already public sector private sector these are the two types of sectors based on ownership and the rest in the public 80% are in the private sector and the rest are in the public sector that means owned by the government and cooperative sectors apart from this there are several thousand small factories with 4 to 10 looms there are several thousands of factories which have 4 to 10 hand looms now in the early years cotton extract industry was concentrated in the cotton growing belt of maharashtra this, this cotton industry is mainly concentrated in maharashtra and gujarat now let us see what are the reasons for this concentration of cotton textile industry in maharashtra and gujarat maharashtra and gujarat they have black cotton soils they are located in the deccan plateau region so some part of gujarat and almost large part of maharashtra they are having black cotton soils which is suitable for growing cotton so availability of raw cotton and good markets are available within the country and also from outside the country also good markets are available for cotton and transport facilities are available because these maharashtra and gujarat they are connected by by roadways railways and airways also with all the other parts of the country and mainly they have seaports maharashtra mumbai is the important seaport and mumbai is connected to all the international seaports in the same way gujarat the main seaport is kandla and kandla is also connected to all the internal airports and also inter- international airports so availability of raw cotton availability of markets within the country and outside the country 
and transport facilities, port facilities, labor are available and climate is also suitable for growing cotton, moist climate. And because of this, this industry could be concentrated in these two states, Maharashtra and Gujarat. And this industry also provides a source of livelihood to many farmers in the name of cotton ball pluckers, workers engaged in ginning, spinning, weaving, dyeing, designing, packaging, tailoring and sewing. For all these things they need labor. So it is providing a source of livelihood a, to a large number of people. Thousands of people are getting source of livelihood with this cotton textiles industry. And also it is increasing demand because of this industry. Demand is increasing for other industries like chemicals, dyeing, these are also needed for cotton textiles industry. Chemicals, dyeing, mill stores, packaging materials, engineering works and all. We'll stop it here and tomorrow I'll continue the lesson.